Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, my name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Today I'm joined again with Dr. Sheikh, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you John? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, the past few episodes we've been discussing, you know, what we should be looking for in a spouse, you know, how the community should help them. And today I want to speak about the pursuit, or should I say the hunt? You know, the <laughs> you know, where subhanAllah, you know, the, the, the man or the woman, they're now looking, you yeah. know, they feel like they're at this, that stage of their life. Maybe they just finished college or university, you know, maybe they just, just started working, whatever it may be. They feel like this is the time in their life that I want to now start actively looking for a spouse. So what should we do? Where should we go? Well, in a Muslim community, the best uh, way to pursue your life mate if you don't know anyone among or within the circle of your family or uh, at work or, or among your colleagues is the masjid mm. the Islamic center mm. you speak to the imam you speak to the elders your mom starts speaking to the other ladies your dad will speak to uh, his colleagues uh, the people who normally come to the masjid it's perfectly okay to say, MashaAllah, my son is graduating this year mm -hmm. and uh, he just finished his uh, law school or medical school. He's going to be a dentist, he's going to be whatever. And uh, I think he's at a marriageable age. We're looking for a good, righteous bride for him. So by spreading the word, on the other hand, there are many, many sisters who mm -hmm. want to get married, but they do not find people to propose to them. So there will mm. be definitely some sort of matching. Mm. Somebody will pick up the offer, whether he or she. Mm. So uh, the masjid is really a very rich area to make such proposal. Conferences, you know, Islamic conferences, mm. uh, because you will find the people whom you like to have as your future uh, mm. mate, if mm. I may say. Uh, especially uh, in, in, in the West, these Islamic conferences and uh, the unofficial matrimonial business mm. where you meet people you happen to see people in the conference mm. you happen to put your name among those who are looking for a spouse whether mm. you're a male and you're looking for mm. a, a wife or a girl and you're looking for this is actually a very safe mm. en environment yeah. because they would not share your informations mm. unnecessarily but only with those mm. whom they think that he's a good mm. suitor so they keep it to a limited uh, uh, scale. What do you think about the internet? Obviously, in, in the modern day mm. context, a lot of people are using the internet, social media, marriage websites, etc. What, what do you think about these platforms? If you're talking about a non-Muslim matrimonial business, you know, you should mm. avoid that completely, completely, mm. because their criterion are completely different than what we're looking for, whether mm. you are a man or a woman. But there are some Muslim matrimonial websites. Mm. I just need to browse them, check out how do they go about mm. introducing me to the other uh, people mm. and how they introduce other people to the suitors. Mm. Okay, If it is something legal and Islamic, Alhamdulillah wa shukrila. I'm not doing something wrong. Mm. You know, I'm not stealing. I'm not dating a girl. I just want to find a good suitor. Especially nowadays where the family relations and the family ties are not as strong as in the past. Mm. The city life is completely different than life in the villages. Everybody in the village knows about everybody and mm. their ages and uh, who wants to get married and who got married, who got divorced. Mm. But in the city life, it's very hard. So it's okay to pursue uh, your life made through mm. Muslim matrimonial mm. websites if mm. they are really uh, honest, trustworthy, mm. and you can easily dis, uh, you know, detect that mm. through checking out the website. Yeah, subhanAllah. So it, it, it's better to start off in your local community, you know, if you're finding someone through a contact or through a friend. Correct. This is much more safer than maybe, you know, a, a marriage website where you don't, you have no connection with that, that person or the family. But of course, you know, but you, sh you first have, number one, to have the interest. Mm. Number two, to know how to go about it. Mm. I mean, um, in, in some conferences, I have some students whom I've seen a few times. And then they become volunteers. Mm. 
And then uh, after so many times I've been visiting, I see them awfully in this country. So once they said, uh, Sheikh, can you make dua for our brother to get married? Because he's been trying for the past five years and no luck. I asked them, why not? They said, well, I don't know. Every time I propose to go, oh, whatever, you know, it doesn't work out. So in the conference, I said, I have known this person for the past several years. Mm -hmm. I have seen him. I know his commitment. And I think he's a good person. If any girl would like to marry this person, so you got three proposals. And they got married eventually. And mashallah, they have a bunch of kids. So all three? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, just one. <laughs> just one. Okay, mashallah. No, so that was just you, you know, taking a proactive role. Yeah. And subhanAllah. Now you're putting me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could do the same for me, Shaykh. <laughs> no, so, so, so what I'm saying is really the the, mm. uh, the public speakers, yeah. if you know the person, never make any recommendation yeah. to a person simply because he attended the conference. Yeah. You have to know. Or them because yeah. you've seen him once or twice, yeah. or because he's wearing mm. a beard, or because yeah. she's wearing a niqab. Mm. It's totally concealed. I have no clue about this person. You know, sometimes the young ones today, especially in the West, they would not even consider someone who their father or their mother has kind of put forward. They kind of want to find their own spouse. What do you think about this? That's a huge drawback, and they don't mm. know what they're missing. Mm. You know how uh, the Americans say, if you don't learn the easy way, then you would end up learning the hard way. Mm. So. I see it this way, when, when a person trusts his parents, mm. in a sense, they know that they love them. They will not dictate to them what to do as far as uh, marriage and choosing their life mates, but at least they recommend. So they keep introducing. They say, son, mm. mashallah, my friend has a daughter. Why don't we go and uh, see her, check her out? Mm. What is wrong with that? Mm. But some kids, they say, no, mm. right away. They say no. The answer in the negative. Hey, Dad, I'm not interested. No, I don't want to get married now. And the girl will say the same thing. Why? What is the reason behind the refusal or even not considering the, the offer mm. or the recommendation? Simply because it came from the parents mm. or from the family. We acknowledge that, that the fact that there is a huge generation gap. But what is wrong with even considering the mm. offer? You don't have to pick it up. Give yeah. it a try. Meet the person. Mm. Perhaps when you meet the person, you'll like him. Mm. So Perhaps he's the person of your dream. Mm. So when you're meeting the, the future spouse, you know, how should this take place? You know, can one go for a coffee, a meal, or what, a walk in the park? In, 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 in this program, we are addressing the proper way of the pursuit in the light of the Islamic guidance. Mm. So maybe uh, some of the audience would say this is like very strict or mm. this is backwarded. But here we are sharing with each other. Mm. What would the Prophet ﷺ tell us if he was alive and among us? Mm. Is it okay if I like your sister to say, we're going out? Mm. Is it okay to take your sister out? Mm. and uh, dine somewhere or enjoy some coffee or walk in mm. the park me and her in order to get to know each other mm. all of that is not permissible before the actual marriage contract mm. but you're making a, a good point I want to mm. get to know that person mm. get to know that person in the presence of a family member mm. so that there are certain things which are crucial to find out about in mm. order to make up your mind, to make your final decision. Mm. Things which you should ask about. Now, mm. seeing the person, it will not make any difference between seeing the person at home, mm. in the presence of a family member, or a mahram, mm. or outside. This is as mm. far as the physical appearance, yeah. okay? But you wanna, I wanna ask him questions. I wanna find out about his uh, hobbies, what he likes, and I'll mm. find out whether he's open-minded or he's closed-minded. Mm ask him he's coming to visit you at home okay so your mm. dad or your mom or whoever is sitting around mm. and is giving you a chance mm. to talk but you know, if you want to please mm. Allah if you want to begin your uh, marriage life uh, in, in a proper way the Almighty Allah says 
So the Almighty Allah says, do not come to the houses from the windows, from the back door. Rather come to the houses from the front door. Knock on the door. When you jump from the window, this is forbidden. This verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran. What is the meaning of come to the house from the front door? I want to marry your daughter. You're the guy who's in a charge. You're the wali. It is not proper to meet the girl, to talk to her, to go out and then to decide everything, then go to the wali and make the proposal. Okay? Yeah. It was recommended, we found out that this girl is a good girl or this guy is a good guy. The wali must be involved from the beginning. Mm. Then there is something called engagement, mm. which will give you plenty of time mm. to decide and to get to know the person mm. from very close. Mm. Uh, again, in the mm. presence of a mahram mm. or family member, so that you make the final decision. So once you're meeting the hopeful future spouse and you meet them with the mahram, you know that maybe at their house or something you can at the I house or outside yeah wherever it's it, w the condition is yeah. that you should not meet mm. the girl alone mm. you should not be so alone when you say her. alone what do you mean so for instance let's say we've agreed with the mahram to meet you know you're the man you know the, the woman is sat here and the mahram is like here you know l looking and listening you know how is it is it okay for the mahram just to be? I want to ask a question. Yeah. If you're interested in marrying a girl, what mm. kind of questions would you like to ask her uh, about her future? What, what she, okay. you know, her, about bit about herself and her. Okay. Yeah. Like what? Be very specific. Um, about children, family, where you want to live. So you're gonna ask her? Uh, do you know how to cook? Perhaps you're going to ask such questions. Yeah, that would okay. be a good one, yeah. Okay. Have you finished your education? Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you planning to pursue a yeah. higher education postgraduate? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you planning to work or you like to be a house engineer? Yeah. All those questions, what is wrong with asking them in the presence of her brother? The or in the presence the of her mom? The brother is different to the father. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the father is like a... You know, you, no, you no, no. Se seriously, you know yeah. why? You know what happens mm. when, if it doesn't work out, you mm. pray the Sahara, you consult with people, and mm. it didn't work out. You know, Alhamdulillah, Shukrullah, people haven't seen you outside together. Mm. So now, uh, if somebody else is interested because it didn't work mm. out with you guys, they say, oh, she's been going out with guys. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 she was not going out with guys. We were mm. just getting to know each other. Yeah, yeah. How many times? How many yeah. people? Definitely. Yeah. You know, but come to the house, mm. knock on the door, seek mm. permission. You're most welcome. Perhaps they will invite you for lunch, mm. okay, for a drink, and you sit and you talk and have all the questions mm. ready in your mind. Mm. And the girl too, have all the mm. questions you want to ask mm. the person who's proposing to you. The serious questions, have them ready in your mind. Like, mm. what do you do for a living? Yeah. And I she mean, says, what, what, what do you yeah. think, she can ask you, mm. what do you think of, uh, you know, men who take another wife? Mm. Be honest and answer. Mm. Okay? Mm. So you can ask this question in the yeah. presence of your family. Yeah. Uh, she may ask you a question. Okay. Um, do you listen to music? Mm. Do you watch movies? Mm. Okay? Mm. Um, any question mm. that you... I, I'm talking mm. about if you're a girl. You want to find out about the crucial matters with this mm. guy. You can ask in the presence of a family member. Yeah. Then once you decided... And after Istashara and Istikhara, I think we finally mm. found the right guy. Mm. There will be engagement. There mm. will be aqd, mm. right? Mm. After the aqd, you want to go out, enjoy it. Mm. Uh, mm. You want to visit family members, enjoy it. Mm. Even before consummating the marriage, because mm. you're already yeah. uh, married. You've processed Hello, the yeah. marriage contract. But before that, no going out, no dating. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We're going to take a short break there. So for those of you at home, make sure you stay tuned. Give us a few minutes and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Sheikh, we've been discussing, you know, how one can actually pursue uh, looking for the perfect spouse, looking for the right spouse. And subhanAllah, maybe somebody has caught somebody's eye in the community. Mm. And subhanAllah, you know the guardian, you know the wali. But maybe you're shy to approach him. Maybe you're younger than, you know, a lot younger than him. You, you grew up in the community with him. You feel shy to approach him. You know, how can you approach these type of... We really have to understand that uh, there should not be any hurt feeling mm. when you propose and your proposal is turned down. Mm. Because simply it doesn't work. Mm. Marriage is simply ijab and qabul, proposal and an agreement and mm. acceptance. Maybe you like the person, but the person has somebody else in mind. Maybe you like the person, but the father has somebody else in mind. Mm. All of that can happen. Mm. Should not have any hurt feeling. But you should not waste the opportunity as well. Sometimes you're reluctant. She's been sitting in front of you mm -hmm. for a year, two and three. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're sitting back and you're shy. Why? Because you're afraid. I'm afraid to ask him. I'm afraid to propose to her because they may refuse me. Until several years later, then somebody else proposes and she gets married. Then you realize mm -hmm. that they were waiting for you to say something, mm -hmm. but you didn't. Take your chance. Mm -hmm. Propose. And uh, if it is something that Allah has destined you for, you will find it easy. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it's not the end of mm. the world. Uh, Umar al-Khattab offered his daughter to Abu Bakr mm. Siddiq. He, he didn't show any interest. Mm. He offered his daughter to Uthman ibn Affan mm. and he literally said, no, I'm not interested. Mm. There's nothing wrong with mm. that. You know, sometimes when people have, you know, sometimes these things take a long time months or even years sometimes this know, is wrong when, i know when you this is really wrong and the the problem with this as well i've I, i've seen a few instances where it's lasted so long you know you've been pursuing this for six months one year two years even you know you, you might even call it an unofficial engagement you know and then it doesn't work out and then they fall into depression absolutely yeah. and as a matter of fact the longer it takes, the greater the possibility that it will not work out. Mm. Akhi, take advantage if you found the right person and you inquired about the person. So you already found him, you're certain. Mm. And you consulted Allah through istikhara and so on. Then make the proposal, get married, and Allah will make it easy for you. Mm. It is not the end of mm. the world. Mm. But to drag it for months and even for years, this is not healthy. This is not healthy at all. Yeah. So what type of questions, what type of things should we be asking uh, in the meeting? When you're sitting with the person, feel free to ask any question that crosses your mind mm. because there are some default questions mm. like, you know, uh, uh, your hobbies, your preferences. Mm. Uh, you know, a man normally would ask whether uh, you know how to cook or not. Mm. Okay. Uh, she would ask whether you're outgoing or not. Mm. And what about the uh, children? Mm. Do you like children? Do you like kids? Mm. Uh, some people say, I would only uh, have one child mm. and no more. So the other person says, no, no, mm. no, 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 no. I, I don't think so. Some people also want to delay children as well. Yeah. Mm. And some people say, I think uh, three, four years later. Why? What is the reason? Mm. That's very suspicious mm. because some people actually, they want to spend some time with a woman. You know, you got to be very careful. Mm. If, if, if a man is serious and if a man loves this woman and if a man is fully convinced that she's going to be his mm. soulmate, a life mm. mate, then there should not be any obstacles on the way of having uh, mm. children, you know. And that's also her right to have children. And it is his right to have children because mm. it, could, it could be uh, either way, either party who is mm. not interested. Yeah. Uh, so those questions should be brought up and discussed from the beginning. Uh, nowadays, we know that all girls go to school and they study, they have degrees. So, you know, it is pretty mm. much expected from a girl who uh, finished her MD that she wants to get a job. She mm. wants to go to the hospital or mm. future, mm. Uh, you know, uh, in, in the future to pursue her master's, then open her own mm. clinic, perhaps. Mm. You know, that's something should not be neglected mm. nor postponed to be discussed after marriage. Yeah. Then you say, well, I never thought that you wanted to work. 
She mm. says, of course, why did I waste seven or ten mm. years of my life in, in acquiring my degree? Mm. To sit at home and to cut onions? Of course, to work, to work as a doctor. So mm. there are crucial questions must mm. be asked. Yeah. There are some uh, other things which vary from an individual uh, to another. Mm. With regards to, um, like, a girl may ask the guy, what is your view on uh, uh, taking a second wife? Mm. Uh, or um, or a third wife. <laughs> <laughs> no second is enough. She will she will have a very clear idea once he answers this question. Subhanallah. Yes, yeah, Subhanallah. So you know, speaking about finance, traveling, you know, this everything really. Mm. It's important to kind of hash it out before mm. you make that big decision in getting married. Like you say, if somebody has studied for a number of years and they have ambitions of working and having their own nursery or mm. their own hospital, whatever it may be, this could actually not be in your vision. You know, as, as a man, you know, that might not be the vision for your family. And, and that's yeah. why, Akhi, elders, parents, uncles mm. must be involved. They will educate you. Mm. They will throw questions at you mm. in order to mm. be cautious from the beginning. Mm. Uh, that's something not to be forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, Sheikh, subhanAllah, you know, some brothers, they, maybe they're not financially uh, as well off as others. And some sisters, maybe they're rich, maybe they have a good job. You know, mm. would it be permissible for them to actually, uh, you know, take care of their husband almost, or, you know, actually finance the husband? Well, is it permissible for a couple or for a man and a woman and the woman is working and she's making more money than the man to get married? Of course it is permissible. Mm. There are other uh, factors that have to be kept in mind which we discussed in the previous episodes, but that is not an obstacle uh, at all. But the questions which should not be skipped, like if you know that you are marrying a person from a particular culture where the mother-in-law lives in the same house, mm. And this is something very common in this culture. Mm. Then you should be very particular mm. about asking this question. Because Islam gives you the right to live in, in an independent house. Mm. Yeah. And when it comes to this, the guy says, no, but in our culture, my mother have to live with us. Mm. Even though she has other kids, mm. and she has a house, and she has a maid, and she has, you know, uh, mm. his parents are both alive, mm. and they're healthy, mashallah, but it is cultural. Mm. that she lives on board with us or both parents mm. live on board with us and then he demands his wife to serve his parents mm. as well to the extent that she will dictate to her what to cook yeah. and when to receive guests when to sleep, when to wake up, everything exactly. become the slave of the mother um, almost not necessarily but I'm saying Sometimes. Some, people, some, some sisters <laughs> are okay with that they are happy with that and they do this for the sake of Allah but is it mandatory? No, it's not mandatory. You know, every woman is entitled for her independent house. You know, the, the, the parents are low, mm. come and go, they visit, we check on them, we take care of them. Sometimes, due to urgent needs, we need to take care of them. She may move in because she doesn't have anyone mm. to look after her. But under the regular circumstances, as a woman, she has the right and she's mm. perfectly entitled for her own flat mm. or apartment mm. and to cook whatever she and her husband mm. decide to cook, mm. not to receive commands from another person. Mm. So as I said, it, it depends mm. on your mm. circumstances mm. and whom you're marrying. You gotta brainstorm mm. that person and think about all mm. the future mm. um, possibilities mm. of having mm. problems in order to avoid them from the beginning. Sheikh, what? type of time scale are we looking at how how long should this take one week two weeks six months you know sometimes as we the mentioned the sooner is the better you know, the sooner yeah. is the better some people after one meeting they make up their mind mm. they pray istikhara and alhamdulillah wa shukrillah mm. because as you said in the, in the beginning of the segment that mm. he knows the uncle he knows the mm. family they've been yeah. around for the past uh, 15 20 years mm. all what he needs to know whether she is okay with marrying him or not Mm. And uh, some fine touch with regards to working or not working, uh, raising the children, uh, the interest of uh, uh, actually living here or moving to another uh, country, yeah. you know. But otherwise, I already know the family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the girl caught my eye. So I'm already mm. interested. 
and she's mm. interested. So mm. a meeting could be sufficient. Mm. But what if one meeting is not sufficient? Mm. Uh, I met the girl and I like her. But she is interested in meeting the guy again to ask questions. Mm. Meet again and mm. again and again. Mm. But as long as it is mm. for the purpose of making up your mind, yeah. it is not for wasting time mm. nor just mere chatting. Yeah. And that's why I said, when it happens within the circle the, uh, of the family, mm. that will make the long story short. Yeah. But when we say, oh, we'll meet, where are you going? Mm. I'm meeting the guy in order to get to know him. We're going to Starbucks. Mm. We're going to uh, Red Lobster. We're going mm. to uh, dine here and there. It's fun. Mm. He's enjoying it. We're mm. meeting. We're mm. meeting. If the person doesn't have the guidelines of halal and haram, mm. they will keep bragging this for long. Yeah. Hey, if you're interested, you ask the serious questions. Mm. Then if you're interested and you have conditions mm. in mind to stipulate for innocence, mm. then make the long story short. Get engaged mm. and get ready for preparing for uh, the marriage contract. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. SubhanAllah. Great advice there. Great examples. Thanks for joining us on this show. You're most and uh, it's a pleasure to have you again and Barak spend some Allah time with you. And uh, inshallah, we'll carry on with this series. Thank you, John. Hopefully we'll get a bit more deeper into this inshallah. next time, inshallah. inshallah. Jazakallah khair. For everyone listening, make sure you join us next time on the Fiqh of Love. And I hope you're benefiting as I am. And inshallah, we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh.